let's go over how to find the transition matrix from one basis to another. In this example, we have a basis B with these two basis vectors and a basis B prime with these two basis vectors. First, we'll find the transition matrix from B to B prime. Then we'll go the other way around. Now, in short, the transition matrix from the old basis B to the new basis B prime is going to be the matrix whose columns are the coordinate vectors of the old basis vectors in terms of the new basis. So how do we find that out? Well, like pretty much always, it comes down to solving a system of linear equations. So we're going to have to express the old basis vector, u1, as a linear combination of the new basis vectors, u1 prime and u2 prime. We're also going to have to express the old basis vector u2 as a linear combination of the new basis vectors. And so we have to solve for these coefficients, c1, c2, and d1, d2, in order to figure out exactly what the coordinates of the old basis vectors are in terms of those new basis vectors. And this leads us to two augmented matrices. We must be able to combine the first components of the new basis vectors in some way to get the first component of the old basis vector. Similarly, we must be able to combine the second components of the new basis vectors in some way to get the second component of the first basis vector. Same thing down here. We must be able to combine the first components of the new basis vectors in some way to get the first component of that second old basis vector. So that's where these augmented matrices are coming from. We then perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this augmented matrix, and you can verify that we arrive at this reduced row echelon form, which tells us C1 is 3 fifths, and C2 is 1 fifth. So this tells us exactly how we can express that basis vector U1 in terms of the new basis vectors. U1 equals 3 fifths U1 prime, plus one fifth u2 prime. So the coordinates of this old basis vector in terms of the new basis is three fifths, one fifth. We do the same thing for u2. Performing Gauss-Jordan elimination on this augmented matrix gets us to this reduced row echelon form. So d1 is negative two fifths and d2 is positive one fifth. So u2 equals negative two fifths u1 prime plus one-fifth u2 prime. So negative two-fifths and one-fifth are the coordinates of this old basis vector relative to the new basis. So those are the transformed coordinate vectors. Those are the old basis vectors relative to that new basis, b prime. And these are what we need to construct the transition matrix. The transition matrix, again, is the matrix whose columns consist of the old basis vectors relative to the new basis. So this column and this column. And there it is. That's our transition matrix from the old basis B to the new basis B prime. Its columns are the old basis vectors relative to the new basis. Next, we'll go the other direction, finding the transition matrix from B prime to B. But we're going to do that in a slightly quicker way, because notice in this first example, although we used two augmented matrices, those two augmented matrices had the exact same coefficient matrix. That's because the coefficient matrix came from the new basis vectors, and in each case we're trying to transform to the new basis vectors. So for this next example, going the other direction, we're going to wrap it all up in one augmented matrix. And that looks like this. Remember, this time we're going from B prime to B. So on the left, we have the new basis vectors, which are 3, 3, and 2, negative 1. And then on the right, we have the old basis vectors, 1, 4, and 12, 3. This is just like what we did before, but wrapped up into one augmented matrix. If you look at this example from before, we have the new basis vectors on the left, and then on the right, we have one of the old basis vectors, but we might as well combine both of the old basis vectors into a single augmented matrix. That's what you see here, and then we perform Gauss-Jordan elimination, and we arrive at this reduced row echelon form. On the left, we have the identity, and on the right, we actually just have the transition matrix. This tells us exactly how to express the old basis vectors from B prime relative to the new basis B. 
For example, u1 prime is equal to 1 u1 minus 1 u2. Meanwhile, u2 prime is equal to 2 u1 plus 3 u2. Hence, these are the old basis vectors relative to the new basis, and that tells us the columns for our transition matrix, which of course agrees with what we have in this augmented matrix. 1, negative 1, 2, 3. So to construct the transition matrix from an old basis to a new basis, we just need to find the old basis vectors relative to the new basis and use those as columns for the matrix. That's how we construct a transition matrix. One other strategy would be to view this transition matrix from B prime to B as undoing the transition from B to B prime. Hence, this is actually just the inverse of the transition matrix that went the other direction. In general, finding the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix is not very difficult, so you may have preferred to just find the inverse of this. Although, with all these fractions, maybe it wouldn't have been so fun. Either way, those are a few strategies you can use to find transition matrices. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find these videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get access to extra practice and exclusive videos, and access to these lecture notes if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Love. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.